These brummies are hard people to, to satisfy. And I just feared that people said, well, this isn't us. But uh, it seems to have really, um, you know, struck a chord in Birmingham as well. And that's the... I think if it, if it hadn't been for that, it wouldn't have had struck a chord elsewhere. It needed to be, you know, appreciated in its home turf. Most of what you see in the show never happened. It's completely made up. Of course, it's a drama. It's a fiction. But there are some elements of truth in there too. And there were real criminals called the Peaky Blinders who operated in this part of Birmingham. And this was one of them, Edward Derrick. It was here in this Birmingham back street that the first attack took place in March 1890 by men who were called Peaky Blinders. And this is his great-grandson, Professor Carl Chin, whose books have debunked some of the show's myths. It's really important to bear in mind that the real Peaky Blinders were not glamorous, well-dressed, charismatic anti-heroes. They were vicious and vile backstreet thugs who attacked each other, the police, and who preyed upon the decent, respectable poor amongst whom they lived. And no, they didn't conceal razor blades in their peaked caps. Brummies know it's not historically accurate, but it hasn't stopped it becoming part of their culture. Super fans love dressing up to show their devotion. There's even a Peaky Blinders festival in Birmingham later this year. It's lovely to see places, you know, as a brummer, because you're like, I've been there, I've been in that pub, I know that road, I know <laughs> yeah. that. And then I think other people want to come to Birmingham to see it as well. I mean, yeah, it's the history about Birmingham as well. My great-granddad grew up in Smallheath and he used to say to me, I was a kid, oh, the Peaky Blinders, 